What's going on everyone? It's Mike aka Sinister Moon and today I want to take a look at the Magnavox Odyssey 2000. I, pick, I picked up this particular unit at a gaming convention called Joystick which my friend Humphrey puts on every year. Uh, my friend Russell was there and I sold him like a little Donkey Kong figurine for a dollar and then he, uh, he came up to me with this towards the end of the uh, convention because we're all sellers at the convention and he was like, do you want to buy this for a dollar? And I'm like, yes, I do. And so we basically just made a trade <laughs> at the end of the day. So anyhow, I, I've had this thing for a year. I haven't bothered to take it out of the box or to try it out. And so here's the big moment of truth, right? Let's uh, open this up, see what's inside. I've opened the box up before and just took a peek at it and just kind of went, oh, cool, you know. But... I haven't taken it out, and so it looks like we have an RF switch tucked into the styrofoam. Yeah, wow, that's uh, that's uh, that, that's a pretty bulky RF switch. Look at this thing. What the fuck did it, it says game cord on it? That's interesting. Is it like the 5200 with the uh, sending power through the unit? No, because there's not a separate power. That just must be uh, a really weird shaped uh, RF output cable coaxial thingamajig. Let's take a look. Let's get this out of here. Oh, hey, there's an instruction manual down there too. That's cool. Yeah, it is. Wow, that is. Look at that. That is funky. Wow. If we can get this to focus. That is weird. I have never seen one looking like that before that's definitely uh, proprietary there <laughs> so let's go ahead and plug that in yeah it goes in there I don't know it doesn't seem to go all the way down in there I don't know if it needs to probably not I mean it feels really secure oops bump the tripod yeah okay well that's kind of an inconvenience because and then you you basically have to hook it up to the old antenna style TV or you have to have an adapter for this adapter because you can't hook it to one of those uh, one of those more modern adapters huh that stinks alright well we'll have to figure that out but here's the console that thing is a big red beast man look at that that is crazy on off reset you got the different games there it looks like hockey tennis uh, what is that, golf? I can't really see it. Yeah, I think it's golf, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and then you got practice, pro, and AM, FM radio. <laughs> and you got these knobs. Knobs feel good. Kind of feels like I'm playing with some nipples right now. Mmm, yeah. Oh, those are nice, lady. You should pierce those. Anyhow, on the back of the console, you got some, uh, compliance stickers there serial number that's interesting oh what's that push to close open all right so yeah this does open up it I read that it takes batteries somewhere so I'll have to open that up with the screwdriver and see if uh, there's any uh, old batteries lingering in there and uh, in here we got the manual uh, we got some other plastic things. I don't know what the heck those are. What the heck are those? I don't get it. Maybe for the uh, cords or something, like the controller cords? I have no idea. Maybe it says in the manual. And you got something else there, too. Oh, it's a warranty. Wow, look at that. The manual looks brand new. Oh, to set up Odyssey. So this came out in 1977, by the way, which is the same year that the Atari VCS came out, or the 2600, as it's more commonly known nowadays. But, yeah, I'm not sure which one came first. But, wow. All right. Well, there it is. So I don't think we really need to see the warranty. It's just... Renewed Odyssey limited warranty. So yeah, let me 
hook this up or try to figure out how I'm going to hook this up and uh, we'll see how it plays. So I just took this thing apart before hooking it up to see how we were going to power it and I do notice that it takes C batteries which I don't have any C batteries like none of my devices run off of C batteries. I mean maybe your mom's dildo in the 1980s did but yeah this this yeah people nowadays don't really have C batteries for anything. I did also notice that there's a speaker, so it has an internal speaker, like a lot of uh, Pong units did back in the day. Uh, the other thing that I'm noticing is is the uh, RF cable is actually directly soldered onto this board here, uh, which is annoying because I would have rather swapped that out for like an Atari style RF cable. That would have been a lot easier to work with. The jackass in me wants to desolder that and solder one on, maybe make that hole in the back a little bit wider, so <laughs> put a thicker cable in it and stuff. And <laughs> but I'm not going to. I'll figure out a way to get it hooked up. I just don't think I have that little adapter. That's my problem. Um, I have the other little adapters, <laughs> the F, F adapter or whatever they're called. Either way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I also noticed that the power is going to that board as well and that's where an AC adapter plugs in. It looks like it's going to run off a 9 volt Atari adapter. So I'm just going to, I'm going to try that and I'm going to try to rig this thing up the best I can. All my TVs are a little bit more modern um, and so they don't have the uh, screw in antenna type prongs output input whatever yeah input that's it anyhow let me put this thing back together test it with the atari adapter and uh hopefully we can finally see what this thing's like all right so this thing is actually kind of fucking with me man so here's the coleco gemini power adapter and and here's the um the AC adapter input, as it's uh, clearly labeled there. When I try to put that in, you can see that it's way too big. Oh, uh, oh, uh, I'm too big for your little tight hole, baby. So yeah, I can't, <laughs> I can't get this thing going tonight. Uh, so yeah, I don't have any C batteries. I don't have an adapter that's going to power it. And I don't have one of these little adapters that's either going to go... At, on the uh, end of these or the one that goes to the end of these so yeah I'm kind of screwed uh, <laughs> so that's it for the, today's review I hope you enjoyed the Odyssey 2000 <laughs> just kidding guys I, I'm gonna go to the store tomorrow and we'll resume once I uh, have batteries in an adapter All right, so it's the next day, and I forgot to go by the store and get batteries. <laughs> and so I decided, you know what, I'm just going to make this thing work without having to buy anything extra. And so what I did is I went ahead and took it apart, and I do notice that if you look at the RF uh, assembly there, you'll notice that the wire is pr proprietary on both sides or the funky size or whatever <laughs> uh, but that is soldered on there and so what you could do if you wanted to is you could desolder that and pull it off of there and just put a standard like a like an Atari RF wire on there if you really wanted to I you know I ended up finding an adapter I knew I had a bunch of those things sitting around and so uh, not a big deal I got it hooked up now. There's the speaker. The pods are some big, pretty big pods. They feel really nice. But yeah, look at this thing. <laughs> There's the power switch, and everything is um, clearly labeled, so you know exactly what's going on. There's the video signal and the other pod. So what I ended up doing, um, so I was wrong. I, I thought this board was the where the RF wire was going to, but it's actually just wrapped around that leg. And then uh, that's for your weird power adapter. 
And so what I did is I went ahead and just went in through the battery input and I just soldered uh, a, a generic 9 volt 200 MA uh, to the bottom. <laughs> Why not, right? So either way, uh, it is hooked up and it is working. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this back together and we're going to check this thing out. Finally. Alright, so let's do this thing. The first mode that I'm going to do is practice. Oh, oh let's reset the score. There we go. And so with practice, obviously, you're just kind of hitting it against the wall. Uh, the ball is going kind of at a medium pace when compared to the... Uh, amateur and professional setting and the paddle is uh, set in the uh, biggest um, setting mode it's the biggest it gets <laughs> all right so there's practice and uh, I believe that's the only one player game the rest of them are gonna be two player and you can see the potentiometer is really smooth uh, it wasn't actually that smooth when I first put it back together. It did have a jitter, so I cleaned them. Um, I kind of just did it the quick and easy way and just sprayed some uh, deoxit uh, D5 inside of it. And uh, yeah, that does it. <laughs> Alright, so there's practice. Uh, so this first game variation is going to be called Smash. And uh, the manual says in Smash, each contestant controls his player, and players in quotation for some reason, his, his player, <laughs> so he is the last to touch the, in quotations again, ball, before it leaves the playing area. The first to score 15 points is the winner. Alright, so let's take it out of practice, and I'll show you the pr pro mode. Jeez, man, that goes pretty quick. Let's see if I can at least get it with one of these. I've never been that great of a Pong player. Not really my uh, game of choice, to be honest. And I know at one point in time, that's pretty much all you had to work with other than like pinball and stuff, but um, yeah, I wasn't alive then, so I didn't uh, really have to deal with that. And here's the amateur version, which the ball is much slower, but the paddles are much smaller. And so it kind of makes it the same. It kind of makes it about the same level of difficulty in a way. And so here is the tennis mode. Typical uh, Pong. And the score keeps going, apparently. And so you have to reset it. This is a good game. I might let myself win, though. Oh, I'm tied with myself. Oh, no, I'm beating myself. I'm glad that we can spend this time together. <laughs> yeah, I watched a video of Sinister Moon playing with himself. It was the greatest thing I've ever seen. All right, so the next one... Oh, well, actually, here's the pro. Whee! Oh, it's MS420, man. All right, so apparently right or the home team is gonna win, and so now we'll go to hockey and we'll reset the score. So here you got two paddles, like a goalie and a, and I don't know a center. Um, yeah, and so this is pretty cool. I like it, and so that's it. That's all there is to the unit. You have now officially seen. The uh, Odyssey 2000. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, do I like playing it? Well, I play it often. Yeah, I like playing it. Well, I play it often. Uh, no. <laughs> it's probably going to go back into the box. Uh, I'm probably going to leave that AC adapter just soldered onto the back of it because why not? It's just a spare adapter, so might as well leave it just in case I want to play it again. But. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty cool. I, I definitely think it was worth the dollar that I paid for it. 
or, well, I guess I, at the end of the day, I didn't really pay anything for it. I just kind of traded a Donkey Kong for it, which I had two or three of, so that's fine. Yeah, I like it. Uh, do I suggest it? Yeah, absolutely. If you want a good Pong unit, this is this is a good one. I don't really like the pro 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 proprietary uh, RF deal of thingamabob. You know what I'm talking about, the adapter thingamajig. And I don't really care for the fact that the power adapter isn't the same one as the, you know, as the Atari 2600 because most things ran off those back in the day. And this one's a little bit smaller, a little bit different. Um, I'm sure you could probably find one somewhere if you, if you went see, if you tried to search it out. But, yeah, I mean, it, it, it sucks nowadays. Hard, harder to find. But, yeah. I'm rambling, so I'm going to end this video by saying the Odyssey 2000 is pretty cool. I like it. It looks cool. Bong hits. <laughs>